name is Destiny Freeman, and I am a third grade general education teacher. So what inspired you to become a teacher? I have been wanting to teach since I was about six years old, actually. Um, I think a huge part of it was just having such amazing teachers in kindergarten and first grade. And they were just women that I always looked up to. And so as I got older and maintained those bonds, my love of teaching just continued to grow. So how important is it to have a positive teacher for uh, children's growth? Oh, it's extremely important, especially for black and brown children in impoverished areas. Um, Because when you think about it, kids are always missing something, right? Whether it's not getting enough attention at home or not getting enough attention at school. And so teachers really do help to fill those developmental gaps as well as, of course, continue to educate them. And so just having that positive role model to look up to really gives kids a sense of, I belong and I can do this and I have a place with someone somewhere. And so I think as educators, it's really important that we understand that our role is more than just educating, but also to be a parent, a nurse, (laughs) you know, someone for them to look up to a hero, just something more than like, just more beyond, hey, I'm here to just teach you one plus one is two. (laughs) And that's it. So have you, when you're teaching, have you taken any like uh, elements that you learned from uh, other teachers growing up? Oh, of course. Um, (laughs) I think growing up, I thought teaching was easy. (laughs) And I've learned that teachers have a lot of patience. (laughs) If nothing else, we have a lot of patience and a lot of love. Um, I don't think I've ever had a teacher more inspiring than my own who were always loving and caring and stayed after school and did tutoring and all those wonderful things. But then I've also seen teachers who yell at their kids and, you know, somewhat belittle them. And I mean, those aren't good things to do to anyone anyway, but, you know, seeing how it impacts a student, not only while they're in school, but potentially for the rest of their lives, right? And so I look at those things and take bits and pieces of it so I know what to do, but then also what not to do, of course. So there's been, you know, a few months in, how has uh, teaching uh, been going so far? It's been interesting to say the least. (laughs) Um, I think a large part of it is that kids are coming back to school for the first time in a year and a half. And so I have third graders, but developmentally speaking, they're really, you know, halfway through their first grade year, right? right? They missed all the social interactions. They missed the learning how to tie their shoe and learning how to, you know, follow directions. They missed all of that for a year and a half. And so this year has really been a year of let's take a step back (laughs) a few steps back and work our way back forward um it's been it's been a transition um trying to get back in the classroom and get the kids back in the classroom I think everyone is trying to get reacclimated to this new world that we're living in and and for you also with graduating you had a year and a half of you know no school how (laughs) How different was that? Because you you probably heard from like other uh, people who actually had hands on training, which you couldn't because of the coronavirus. Oh, yeah, it was interesting. (laughs) It was different. Um, I think I missed that part a lot, not getting to engage with kids um, because we were able to virtually student teach. Um, And so I definitely got tech savvy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Over the past year and a half, I kind of had to, um, but, you know, being a, you know, not getting to see what behavior management looks like in the classroom was something that I think I really missed out on, you know, because when someone's at home, they're not necessarily throwing tantrums or running out the classroom or, you know, the biggest issue you have virtually is, Timmy, your camera's not on, <laughs> you know, which you can't really help. Um, so getting back in the classroom and, you know, when students start to go through their different emotions, not, um, 
knowing what to do has been something that I've missed out on a lot. <laughs> so I'm learning. So my wife's a teacher. She's been teaching for like almost 18 years, I think. And oh, oh. Uh, a few years ago, she uh, started teaching at a Title I school in Alexandria. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, you know, it, it is tougher in those elements with supplies and everything like that. How does it feel to you not only teaching them, but making sure, you know, they have the right supplies, they have everything? I do it because it's something that I know I need to do because, I mean, if the county's not doing it and the parents can't do it, then, you know, who really else is there? Um, you know, because that's why I got into teaching. I never really wanted to teach students who had everything under the sun plus some. I always wanted to go and help those kids who didn't have notebooks and books. And some of my kids don't have clothes. Several we just had to give one of my students a jacket like they don't have. And so there's definitely pressure to, you know, make sure that they have everything that they need. And of course, teachers aren't rich, <laughs> you know, so it's very taxing, you know, both emotionally, just knowing your kids don't have, but then also financially trying to figure out where is this money going to come from? Because I have bills too. <laughs> so can you tell me, uh, I've, I found you, uh, while I was researching GoFundMe, can you tell me about uh, what um, motivated you to create one uh, before school started, which was very smart on your part? <laughs> um, I had I had originally just asked like friends and family um, and that wasn't working too well. <laughs> um, I mean, of course, I was grateful. I think I got maybe one hundred dollars. Um, I was like, you know what? Everybody else is doing GoFundMe like. Um, I don't know if you heard about the woman that got gorilla glue stuck in her hair. She made a GoFundMe and made a lot of money. I said, well, I could probably do that too. <laughs> um, so I did it. And I mean, it's been working and I've been very blessed with the people who have donated, um, you know, but money runs out quick, <laughs> unfortunately, especially with COVID and prices continually right. rising, you know, so, you know, we're low on, food that I would normally buy for my kids. Supplies have are now gone. Um, I recently just got three more students. And so it's like, oh, they need supplies and they need food. And, you know, we try to keep everything clean. <laughs> so cleaning supplies isn't being provided by the school. So, you know, I've been trying to make do with what I can <laughs> to get those things in the school as well. So, you know, just making sure that all of that gets done. But, you know, <laughs> You're doing it. That's all that matters. I'm doing it <laughs> the best I can. <laughs> so what have you learned so far from your students? I have learned that children are little people. They're little adults. <laughs> and yeah. I think as adults, we tend to forget that, that kids are miniature adults. Like they have feelings and emotions and they go through problems and they get stressed and tired and frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> definitely frustrated. Um, and so just that nice little reminder <laughs> that kids are people too, you know, and that we should treat them as such. Cause I think a lot of times we forget to. I agree. <laughs> it's a, I have a, a seven-year-old and a three-year-old and seven-year-olds in first <laughs> grade. And she is, you don't realize how they are many people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have drama too. <laughs> they do. <laughs> so where do you want to see yourself in, in the next five years? Hopefully somebody's principal somewhere. <laughs> um, I think you want to be principal. Yeah. I, maybe even more than that. I think that I can, I, as, as I'm, I've only just begun to teach, but the school system has its trials and tribulations, just like anything else. And I feel like I could definitely be a positive influence, you know, and a positive, you know, just, I guess just a someone to make change, hopefully. You know, I think teachers don't get the support they need very often. I don't think that they 
are listened to very often. And when they are, I don't think that change is made that is in the best benefit of everyone. Um, and so maybe if I get higher up on the totem pole, I'll be able to, you know, make some headway for teachers just a little bit. 